Okay, past my um, experiment in modeling it mathematically. Um, for a previous video, if you remember this, which is my um, Flynn test apparatus, I've wired this up in accordance with the um, video that I did earlier. So these two coils, this one and this one, aren't connected. That's my input coil is connected, and that's my output coil for where I'm reading the output from. I've got a sound card oscilloscope in my computer, which I'm running a square wave function with a 25% duty cycle. And I'm taking that out of the uh, speakers and putting it into a stereo power amplifier and then taking the power amplifier and putting it into this. After all of that, we're only actually inputting about 3 or 4 millivolts, which is not very much. Oh, the frequency is 50 hertz, incidentally, um, which is not very much. But, surprisingly enough, we're getting 20 millivolts out of this side. It does vary quite a bit, but um, that's actually quite impressive. There could be a couple of reasons for that. It could be that the um, flux of these two magnets that's being forced in and out of this coil is contributing to um, the voltage and the step up of this transformer because we're getting about twice the amount out as we're putting in. Um, so that's one reason, and it could be, of course, that the speed of the collapse of the magnetic field is causing a uh, back EMF spike in this coil here. So it's one of those two reasons. But it is really interesting that, um, according to the theory, if I just run this coil, I should be able to drive, uh, I just drive this coil, I should be able to pull off this coil. And in practice, that's exactly what happens. And it's really, really quite riveting. So I guess the next thing, really, would be to... Um, create a circuit that's going to pulse DC into there and run that from this and try to get this self running so that's the next step it's one of the reasons I put a tickler coil in here incidentally was the whole idea was that as the flux goes through here and it collapses it's going to induce a voltage in the tickler coil and then the main coil and I can use the tickler coil to feed a transistor as an on off switch so we're going to get some self resonance out of it so it can turn itself off and on um, put a diode bridge across the outputs and see what we get. But there you go, that, that's where I'm at at the moment and that is really quite fascinating.